Oh no.
Hey, Steve. Hey there. Hey. I am so sorry for the um, like the misunderstanding about the time frame. I apologize. Well, I, I, I didn't talk to, uh, with the end of the send. I was like, okay, well, okay, we're gonna meet today at three on Zoom. And then my wife's like, no, he said we're gonna be on Saturday on Zoom. And then you had the completely different thing. I, 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 I just meant uh, Saturday. I could, you know, I figured it would give a couple more days, you know, to make sure that you know I'm not contagious or whatnot, and then I could come to you in person because yeah, I knew that, totally. that was important. Yeah. So I apologize. I just, I, you know, with, especially with the kids and having kids, I'm just would rather be careful than not, you know, yeah, it's no just like a super sore throat and just want to make sure I'm not, I'm not like, um, I'm not meeting anybody. I'm going to my office and whatnot and locking myself in there. But, um, you know, my, my goal is just have another conversation after we were able to, you know, ha uh, kind of go over everything and just really see if you had any further questions after our meeting and then just, uh, make sure, you know, I can answer those questions and set up what happens next. Sure. Sure. Um, did you have any specific questions? Um, I did not have any specific questions. Han, do you have any specific questions? No, no, no specific questions. Well, uh, she, she, she's making cookies with our daughter right now. <laughs> uh, um, I would I would say that um, one of the questions that I have is so you you talk to your agent they seem to think that uh, you know contingent offers without the house listed yet is probably pretty tough to do. Yeah, they actually uh, specifically said uh, if you don't have a sale yet, it would be t it would be tough, almost impossible. Yeah, they said five percent chance. Yeah, yeah. So I I kind of figured that. So you you know that's not uncommon here either. So, you know, that would lead me to, to think that, you know, doing it the, um, doing it the way we had discussed, which is getting the house up for sale, finding a buyer, then writing the offer is definitely the, the way to go. Um, unless for some reason they, you know, the right house pops up and that seller's willing to accept your offer without your house sold yet. Yeah. That, that would be amazing, but uh, highly unlikely, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And usually, like I had mentioned in our meeting, usually in that instance, it's like you're having to like kind of overpay, you, you know, you're offering 10, 20,000 more than you really mm -hmm. are comfortable with uh, to get that offer accepted. Yeah. And, um, you know, every house price range is different and all that sort of stuff. But uh, uh, let me let me just bring up his email really quick. Because he actually said that most houses right now are actually, they're still offering over, even without contingencies like that, they're still mm. selling. Uh, but we've noticed a lot of properties that we're still into will sell on the market. So we might be able to find a, a good uh, opportunity for us. Yeah. That's, I mean, uh, you know, having a majority of the home selling over asking is pretty, I, I have not been hearing that story. And I, I and no. I connect with many uh, agents all over the country right so uh, so would... he said uh 60 of the deals are currently competitive uh multiple offers price five percent or more over asking uh got so it that that's 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 what he says on his side what he's seeing yeah well and and i i that, that doesn't mean that we can't achieve your goal right it just means that um we're we're pro i've i i had assumed it was going to be best for you. And, and usually it is, it is to put the house up for sale first and then find a buyer, then write an offer um, or negotiate like a delayed closing. So it gives you time to go ahead and write the offer. Yeah. That's, that's what I anticipated, but I'm glad that you were able to, to ask that question. So if that is the case, right? So we are planning to, you know, the, the primary objective is get the house up for sale um, you know, I would, I would think, let's think about that timeline then, um, and, and would love your feedback on what do you think is the earliest you want to have the house up for sale with the understanding that it might take, you know, three or four weeks to, to sell, to actually sell. So, uh, do you, how, do you remember the exact date of, of, uh, the end of school? Um, I'm pretty sure it's May 18th. It's like, yeah, I, was, I thought that's what I, I'm pretty sure May 18th is the day that I'm out of school. So like, yeah, May yeah. 23rd would be the day, like the la the first day we could uh, close.
Cool. Close or put your house up for sale? Close. Close. Okay. So so May May closing date would mean like a February listing date usually. So you, you know what I mean by that is yeah. So let's say you get out of school in May, right? Um from the if what's the best way I want to explain this? The date of closing on your home, we want to start usually 60 days before that listing the home. Okay. Because uh, it takes, you know, we list your home, we do the showings, open houses and stuff. Let's just say best case scenario, it sells in a week and a half or two, or two weeks. Worst case scenario, it might take three or four weeks. So if we listed February 1st, we're actually not accepting an offer until, let's just say conservatively, February 20th. Right. And then if we accept an offer on February 20th, we have at least a 30 day closing, um, which would take us to March 20th. Right. Um, April, May, we can always uh, schedule, let's say, a move out date uh, based on whenever you need to move and have some kind of negotiated rent back or time. Usually with uh, we try to limit that time within a 60 day window. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I feel pretty confident I can get someone 60 days after closing. Um, ultimately, it comes down to when you want to list the house and do the showings and, and all of that, right? Yeah. And do, if we want to if we wanna wait till after you're out, we could we could wait until after you're out to do that. I just think that you're not really moving until July or August at that point. Okay. Yeah, doing it that early sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> But you can do March, yeah. April too, right? Like, so yeah, you don't totally. have to, you don't have to do it in February. I'm just, I was just kind of spit, split. No, split totally. I, I, and I get where you're at. Um, But like, we don't, like, if we have a sale, we want it to be like, okay, if they have a contingency, like for us to stay in the house for 60 days, we want to be able to be like, okay, we can do that easily and not have to like, okay, we only have the week contingency to push. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I guess my point is, you, you know, if you want to move when you're done with school, like that's when you actually could move. Um, when do you foresee yourself feeling comfortable knowing that we want about 60 days from we, from when we list to when you move, um, putting the house, having the house ready to go up for sale? Would that be April, March? Um, I mean, it's really it's up to you i knew she was gonna say that <laughs> i was gonna say no it's up to well, you but well, the, here, if, if it was up to me we'd already be moved <laughs> so um the only thing is i like i really don't have any time to do anything around the house or anything like that um it and cleaning me. and all that sort of stuff it would take come down to her to clean the house and to get the kids out of the house so those people can come and see it yeah um and currently we only have one car because our other car is um not working um but it i technically we could put the house on the market i i would feel comfortable in uh march yeah yeah, yeah. and we can always help you get like estimates of the things that you wanted to finish maria talked about that yeah. i can certainly work on helping you get that for sure um you know the showing aspect my hope would be like for example we have a a condo in citrus heights we put it up uh three hundred forty thousand on on friday we just signed an offer today right like it it happens yeah. you know, i would say the window of of opportunity i would say is about two to three weeks of uh, disruption to show and we can actually accommodate showings based on your schedule and how you want to show so if she if she would rather only do showings from like one to seven we could do that or five to seven during the week or however you want to do it um yeah because the, the the real real problem is like the only time we're both home where we can get the kids out and all that sort of stuff is wednesdays yeah um, on weekends like she, she works in the mornings. I work in the afternoon. So there's not like, I could take a day off to do that. Uh, to do yeah, like, we don't want to do that. Weekend. Yeah. We can't but do it, days it off. Hard to get that uh, lined up. I, I feel, but um, if, if it's possible to do, it would be good to do it at 
at least a month before we we are looking to move in May. Yeah. But, um, you know, if we could do it earlier and get it set up, so like, oh, people are actually seeing it and wanting to buy it at that, that point. Yeah, that makes sense. So if if you're working in the afternoon and she's working in the morning, that just means, um, like when you guys are opposite, you have both kids by yourself, basically. Yeah, and making sure the things like if we're if we're leaving to do a showing that all the things are picked Cleaning, up. Cleaning, picking up. Yeah, it's yeah. just hard. It's super hard. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And, and and so my I would re- reply with my schedule is you know, the best time is the best time for you. Obviously, time time is not on sellers sides. You, you know, if values are declining, let's say uh 1% per month, the longer we wait um, you, you know, the more risk there is that the home might sell for a little bit less, right? But that doesn't mean we put the house up four months in advance of when you want to move, right? So mm-hmm. there has to be this balance of, you you, you know, it, does it fit your schedule and and is it a good time? So if I could pick a time, I would say, you know, probably no later than March based on when you want to actually move. Worst case mm-hmm. scenario, you list in an April I would say April's like one of the months where we see the most homes come up for sale. So, you know, you're, you're, you know, historically there's more homes available in April, May than there are in February and March, if that makes sense. I, I would say like, because I'll be the one who has to deal with cleaning the house and all of that. I can handle quite a bit. So like having everything cleaned and like, if we know where there's a time, okay, I need to have everything done by four, then I will have everything done by four. <laughs> like that, yeah. that, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. It just is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's more so just like, oh, we know we're having people come over like the day of, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is It is super hard. But if we have a structure to it, which I could totally build around you. Yeah. And, okay. and so let's just say Monday through Friday, we want four to eight or seven or whatever the numbers are, four to seven, Monday through Friday, weekends, these times. And then as showing source, we just know every day you're going to have that four o'clock the best we can, right? Obviously, it's never going to be perfect. And then we'll schedule showings in those blocks. Some days we'll have showings, some days we won't, but we'll know, you know, come four o'clock, that's the time when we, if, if, um, if there's a showing scheduled, we know it's going to start between four and seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we give you an app and, and the app actually um updates you as showings are scheduled and we can make it so that those showings are scheduled 24 hours in advance now there's always the off chance that we get a really good buyer that says hey can i come over at two and if if (laughs) i if i vet it out and it's like they're from bay area they have to go back tonight i'm going to call you and ask of course but um it's pretty rare where we're not planning this out where they call us the day before we know about the showing and yeah okay uh, yeah, uh, I guess I thought of a question about the um, post uh, post sale occupancy, mm-hmm. uh, like on a house our price. What's the typical daily rate on that? Uh, it, it it truly depends on how much down the buyer's putting. So on a conventional down payment, twenty percent down. I mean, I would guess that daily it's probably eighty bucks, something like that. You, you know, okay. so. Uh, sometimes the buyers give us 30 days for free and then offer us another 30 for um, a daily charge or a rent back charge. Um, and that's all calculated at the time of closing and it's all prepaid. So, okay. you, you know, it's okay. not like you cut a check every month. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. It comes out of your proceeds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It, it's still, it would still be a cut out of our, what it's, we could- hundred yeah. percent. It's actually something that we would factor into any offer negotiation with the buyer. And, and I would clearly say, well, you know, if you accept with a rent back, here's what you walk away with. If you accept without a rent back, here's what you walk away with. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Um, and sometimes time is pretty valuable, like money, especially when you, when you need to write offers and get those offers accepted. Yeah. 
you know, because you you need the time to make sure that you can get the house you want. And then also, you know, who knows what kind of time frame your seller will have there, right? So hopefully maybe That's it's true. vacant. Um, so we'll just have to work around that as we go. That's why I also say if we want to move in May, we want to give ourselves some time to list the house and negotiate and get the right buyer um, and, and start and start hunting the home that you want to buy there. Gotcha. Um, that way you have plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for to for me, March would be fine. Like, I I don't feel like we have a heck of a lot that we really have to do with the house. No. And so yeah, like prep on it. That wouldn't be t like too difficult. And um, in the last few days, we've done a lot of yard work. Like our yards are looking really good. Like almost about as good as they're gonna look. And so going into spring, it's just gonna be even better with with the blooming and all. So yeah, I don't feel like we have a heck of a lot. So I'm not too concerned about moving the date up, but mm -hmm. that's why it just, with Scott, it just comes down to like what he feels like he wants to do because he'll be doing all the prequel stuff on the other end. So, yeah, that, that, that stuff, so, like I have all the paper for that. So okay. that, should, that won't be that difficult to get through. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, March, sounds great to me yeah yeah and i i think that that gives you and then also gives you about a month and a half to prepare right exactly. so we can um and as part of our service remember we will either uh, pay for the cleaner before listing or when you're moved out so you don't have to come back in and and clean we'll clean for you right uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so I think that gives me a little bit of time over the next few weeks to get you some estimates on those small repairs that you want to do so you can make a decision. Would you rather pay someone or would you rather uh, do it yourself, right? I mean, I think, honestly, we're going to have to pay someone. But because, for, for a majority of it. Yeah. yeah to get yeah. it done in time. Yeah, yeah. Just because like Scott, the last like four semesters has only had two classes. Now he has three. They're supposed to be a little bit easier, but he still has to get all that done yeah. and do all of <laughs> this other stuff. So yeah, yeah we we'll probably will just end up having someone do a, maybe do a lump sum, like <laughs> given everything we need. Yeah. yeah and it, it's not going to be a lot uh, based on what, you told me and and like i said um we can save you know we can cover the cost of that to have the payment come out at closing that way it saves your capital for moving expenses preparation that's, all of that stuff that's true all so right it's not that big of a deal um but uh, uh, so that was one of the things i wanted to work on after we met each other was like okay let's go down that list again that way i'm clear on what we need yeah okay okay yeah, no, that, yeah, that's, I, that's for us. Um, I, I also had a question uh, because my wife's talking to some of the people at work about selling our house. And one of the cup, one of the people working there and her husband are looking to buy a house right now. Like they are looking now and they, yeah, they, actively. Yes. So, and so she was wanting like very interested in coming to see the house and, and all of that. So, so how, uh, do, like, is there any downfall to yeah. having a friendly sale like that? Like, no. to have come in and heck no, no, it <laughs> saves massive amounts of money for you. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm super honest, and I, hopefully that's why you decided we were, were a good fit. Like, if if they indeed buy your home, um, we have a basically a 1.5 percent fee, or you, I'll just give you the paperwork. You could do it yourself, but for a 1.5% fee, we would provide them an agent. I would help you as an agent. There's separation. We treat it just like every other transaction, run it through the brokerage, through all the insurances and disclosures, just like you normally would. So um, the number one real estate law, um, I don't know what you want to call it. Both on the agent side is called dual agency. It's the number one reason why people that are real estate agents lose their licenses. And oh. then on the seller side, it's called an arm's length transaction. It's the number one um, like suit against uh, in real estate law. Oh. Um, so that's why I always recommend 
you know, instead of a full fee, we would char we charge a 1.5% fee to facilitate a transaction for you. Um, we can, I'm also willing to just give you the paperwork, guide you, give you the, um, you know, the title company that you can call and you can kind of do a fit for sale by owner, right? As much as I love doing paperwork and I like <laughs> all my own taxes, I'm pretty sure I'll leave that 70 page document to you guys to see. Yeah, right? and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you're talking about like $5,000, right? To make sure that that buyer can't come back to you, right? Mm -hmm. But I always, this is not uncommon. I would say almost every home, someone says, I'm interested in taking a look at it. And I absolutely, that's why we have this, you know, we, we already pre-plan if that happens, here's what we would charge. Um, so you should totally vet it out. If you feel uncomfortable talking to them about that, you can just have them call me and I'd say, Hey, we can schedule time. I'll meet you over there. If you guys want to run through it with them, have them come over, you're close to them. And, and then when it comes to the price discussion, then refer them over to me. Um, and you could just say things like, I don't know, Steve's got some kind of idea of what he thinks it's worth. Right. That way you don't have to have that weird, well, you, you know, because usually uh, people think no, buying off market is a discount, right? Especially. I, I told him, I told her that we had met with you mm -hmm. and that you had roughly quoted it at 389. There you and, go. And she was like, oh, okay, cool. And yeah. that was like, yeah. it, it wasn't because they qualified for 450. Yeah. So they already looked at houses in that range Got and I showed her the pictures that I had taken of the house and stuff. And she was like, oh, that looks really similar to ones that we're already looking at. Yep. Um, and so that's why she was like, yeah, I would really like to come over and see it. Still, still price negotiations between yeah. families might be difficult. It's just a little weird sometimes, but I mean, you already set her expectations. So she already is no knowing what she's walking into. I would say, gosh, if she was willing to pay you three ninety dollars and you could only pay $1.5, like you guys are, are sitting really good, especially if she's willing to let, like, uh, let you stay there and give you time, all those things. Uh, so the typical typical uh, lent, or typical um, agent fee for combined is like two point five, right? Uh, two point five percent for each agent. Yeah. Oh, so five percent okay. total. If we're facilitating a transaction fee, that's why it's so much cheaper. One point five percent. You're saving wow. like three and a half percent, basically. Got it. Yeah. Because yeah. there is no marketing fee. There's no buyer's agent involved like there's no there's no marketing and time in general other than we just have to have that level of separation right one agent for them one agent for you and and we're treating it just like a, a normal transaction and that's actually one of the reasons why i didn't like our very first agent because she was actually showing the house that we were buying mm -hmm. and, or putting the offer on and she was like no i can put the offer in for you and i was just mm -hmm. like that doesn't sound right no <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I've, you know, I'm against the dual agency thing. <clears throat> it's I, there's too much risk there as like the true definition of a fiduciary. It, it, you're totally in breach of a fiduciary responsibility. If you have two principles on the same transaction, right? Yeah. That would be like an attorney representing the plaintiff and the defendant. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's why there's all kinds of lawsuits there. Yeah. Um, so, so my recommendation would be, um, you, you know, at our meeting, we'll do it Wednesday. I mean, we, we have time until, you know, you're, you're ready to go. Um, at, on Wednesday, my goal would be, I'm going to come there to get a clear idea of the items you want me to get estimates on. And then we can kind of roughly set our timeline for trying to hit the market in March. But we're so far away, it's, you got plenty of time. There's no reason to stress on that. And then uh, we'll go over like the paperwork together, the the timeline of getting the estimates together, and then what happens next uh, in that process. But it'll it'll probably only take me like a, a few days to get you estimates, and then we can schedule the repairs right away. Perfect. Okay. Um, oh, the 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 grapefruit juice in the oh, yeah. fridge. Um. And then the only other thing that I was thinking of for this uh, meeting was just figuring out the uh, process for the trade-in um, program. 
yeah, so we can start that process to make sure that <clears throat> um, I don't want to start it too early only because we're going to have to update the valuation. So at our meeting, when I come, I'm going to take the pictures. I'm going to, some, uh, you know, maybe later that week, I'll submit the pictures. And then by the end of this month, it's the 18th, I would like to get the first qualification at the end of the month because that means all of February, we have a window where we can actually, you know, potentially write offers, right? Because if you went in contract on your new home, February, March, April, May is when you're going to be closing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll just want to look at those numbers, make sure, you know, the down payment amount, um, whatever, because we can, we can, we can qualify to get about 80% of your equity up front, right? And so I just want to make sure that that 80% is enough based on the down payment for the new home. Um, you know, how we kind of talked about, you you need to have enough to make a down payment enough to afford the payment with 80% of your equity. Make sense? Yeah. Because you're not able to use all your equity as a down payment to buy with trade-in. So we'll run those numbers and make sure that we qualify that for sure. Okay. So um, I, be, be, I am a veteran and I was going to use a, I was going to look into <clears throat> a VA loan for the thing. So wow. if they give us the equity set, like, okay, we, we want to put in dual offers. We want to make sure we have a regular and a VA loan in there. Um, and then we use the VA loan rather than the regular. Do we, we, we still have that loan out there. So we have to pay that back or is it just, they have that loan in case of, um, we need to make a purchase. Do, do you think that you can qualify to buy using the VA loan while owning your current home? Have you looked at that yet? So I, I know that it's difficult and I know that it's the, the, qualifications are different than just buying a new home. Hmm. Um, but I'm pretty sure uh, I, we would still need uh, two to 3.5% down for the VA loan. But then there's also the VA funding fee and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. The well. 10, yeah. The, so the closing costs be about 20. So <clears throat> I guess, you know, for me, because you're going to use a VA loan, um, you know, we would have to look at that. We'll have to look at that with the trade-in simulation. You can, like, the the down payment is actually a loan with zero interest because you're not selling your home until you've moved out and you close. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so but it, it's zero interest, but it is a percentage of the loan is a fee, right? Yeah. Mm, not Not really. Say you have, just to keep it super duper simple, you have a hundred thousand in equity. I can only give you eighty thousand of that because we want to leave the twenty grand as a buffer, just in case. You know, not only is it a buffer, but it's also covering your uh, commissions, your closing costs, sixty days from now when you actually have to sell, right? Yeah. So let's say it's seventy-five to eighty percent, but let's just say it's eighty thousand. Um, I give that to you uh, to make your offer on your new home. Well. You get your financing through the same company. So you have 80 grand to put down. They would qualify you on your new home purchase price. Say it's 300 uh, minus the 80, you have a $220,000 loan amount, right? Well, they're making that assumption that you already sold your home because the company that does the trade-in is the financer. They can do that. They can say, well, that home's gone. The 80,000 is really your money, it's just a loan right now, right? Yeah. So so when you go to buy the $300,000 home, you're using an $80,000 loan, but there's no interest on it. Um, you make that purchase, you have a payment based on a loan amount with an $80,000 down payment, right? Um, when we go to sell your home and we let's say we sell it and we hit the numbers we thought, you get a $100,000 chunk in net profit, right? Okay. Well, 20,000 of that net profit was already, um, let's say, held back because we knew 5% uh, goes to agent fees, 1% goes to closing costs. 
And then we held back around 10% just in case it didn't sell for what we thought it would. It's that balance that comes back to you, right? So the of your $100,000 after you sell, 80,000 goes to pay the down payment loan. Um, you know, 10, 15,000 would go to pay the fees that we had estimated. And then 10, 10,000 would come back to you, which is the buffer we thought you would need. Even though we hit our, you know, if everything goes according to plan, you're going to get a chunk of that money back. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of your closing costs and you know, your commissions, closing costs on your sale are built into that, that, uh, initial down payment amount that you're qualifying for because it's as if we're trying to sell the home right now, but we know we're selling it in the future. Got it. Got it. Because we, it's like you're prepaying everything based on an estimate because we want to make sure you have enough money. Got it. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, that totally makes sense. I, um, I was specifically asked because no, no 0% loan comes free. Like, so um, that percent comes from that t uh, 20% or whatever. Well, the, not fully, but part of it. The program costs 1.2% to use. The, okay, loan yeah, fee, yeah. the loan fee to use the trade-in program is 1.2%. Got it? The, the interest rate on the down payment loan is zero. So they're offering the down payment trade-in loan as the incentive to use them to use their loan company which they charge the 1.2 percent got it so th they're moving money around moving percentages around just to make it easier but also beneficial for them 100 percent. just like we offer you know our concierge program that does renovations up front now i don't charge a higher uh commission to you know i charge the same commission as other agents but i probably earn more people that want to work with us by nature, we're going to make more money because there's more people choosing us because we offer this exceptional value for the cost, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really what that program is. So that 1.2% loan fee closing cost is built into your closing costs, but we would go over all of those costs um, together as we go through the qualification process, totally. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still working through like how that works because it feels, it feels weird having like, oh yeah, you have this program and it's just like, okay, how, how does it, how does it actually work? But yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, my, um, uh, it, it's very confusing if I just explain it to you. It's way, it, you will have all your questions answered when we see like the spreadsheet and we're going oh. line by line. And we'll do that in a couple of weeks uh, to make sure um, it will work. Number one, number two, I can answer, is that the best way to try to go about this or or can we do it a different way? Um, and then on the same line, uh, I, I was watching YouTube the other day and that's a great way to start this, but um, there was this, uh, it, it was a advertisement for a credit card that was a basically to, was it the equity of your house have you seen anything like that yeah yeah it sounded really too good to be true i don't trust it but i was just wondering if that was there was anything to that i'm trying to think of what that is it's a black credit card right um, uh yeah i was think it so figure like or line and then equit or something like that yeah it's one of those tech startups with uh, you yeah. know a better way um to me, it sounds very dangerous, but it's it's a thing. No. Uh, they use just, just which I don't know why you even need to use the, yeah, it's, so it's, it's a HELOC, but they give you a credit card, which is kind of how HELOCs work anyways, but most of them have, you just write a check for whatever you want to buy yeah. from the account. Um, but yes, it is a, a HELOC company that gives you a credit card. Yeah, because they they the company that was said they offered loans as low as like two percent or something like that, which um sounds fantastic, even for a HELOC. I like two percent uh, interest is like unheard of for anything. Yeah. So I was just wondering if that was 
I think that sounds fishy. I think that that's like an introductory rate for a short period of time. Uh, I most HELOCs are running eight nine percent. Like, they, well, but if it's two percent for a year, that sounds great to us because we're not going to have that loan out for a year. For sure, I don't think you can. Um, well, I know that most lenders will not allow you to put any down payment or or anything on a purchase on a credit card. You can uh, use a HELOC. Uh -huh. Um, and you can cut a check, right? That That is something you could do. You can cut a check for your down payment. The challenge is as soon as you write the check and, and that money winds up on your HELOC, that's now a debt and it factors against your debt to income, right? Yeah. So, so it's just something we would have to like balance out and figure out, right? Okay. My, yeah. my thought process was if you have the income level to qualify to buy with a VA loan at 300,000, um, my thought was, well, maybe I can just float your monthly payment on the old house until, you, you know, until it sells. And then you can just pay me back your monthly payments when it sells. Um, that way you're not making two mortgage payments, right? But you would have to be able to qualify to pay both mortgage payments. That's a question we would have to answer. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be, that would be still pretty tough either way. Um, but yeah, that it's always a, everything is an option. Pretty much everything is an option. So. Yeah. Hi, Charlotte. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> um, so I'll I'll follow up on that. My goal will be to give you two or three different options to make that you know to make this come to fruition, and then you know from there we'll be able to. Um, you know, kind of give you some certainty around that and, and go from there. Sounds good. Sense? Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, um, one more question uh, about, because our current house is on a VA loan and it has a very low interest rate and um, everything like that. When we bought it with the interest rate, our, Realtor or lender at the time said, oh, yeah, and if you find another veteran who wants to buy your house, they can pay you the whatever you would want of the equity and then basically take over the loan at that amount. Is that real or is that? That's real. Um, the, the VA loan is assumable. So that is 100% something that we're going to be um, marketing 100% for sure. Okay. Even, yeah, yeah, even someone who's not a VA borrower um, can assume the VA rate. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. Because uh, that, like, I, I figured that, oh, hey, yeah, 2.75% loan in the era of yeah. 5 years. Oh, it's huge. It's, yeah. it's, it's 100%. Uh, something that we do. So it, it's it's actually added into our marketing um, agreements, right? And and we we will actively be trying to make that happen. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And it is just, uh, I mean, it's not easy to do. There's just a small fee and it takes a little bit of time, but it's absolutely something that we try to work on Um you know, uh, most buyers are going to want to try to assume it. Yeah. You know, awesome. Um, well that, that I think expires my questions. Uh, anything you need to add to this? No, no. I think that, um, I really just wanted to get a sense of, okay, if we work backwards from there, you know, kind of time frame wise, but that answers all my questions. And so we'll plan to meet Wednesday and, um, and, and go from there. Got it. Perfect. Okay. okay, cool. Call me if you need anything. I'll plan on meeting you on Wednesday. What time would work well for you on Wednesday? Uh, anytime after one. Okay. Let me pull up my schedule real quick. Let's see. Can't see it because it's like, hold on a second. That's the 25th. Um, okay, let's go uh, two o'clock Wednesday.
Two o'clock on Wednesday. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Cool. Wednesday, two o'clock. I will see you there. And then you call me if uh, anything changes. And I'm sorry for um, not being able to come out today. I just, I just didn't. Yeah, you know, totally last good. thing I want to do is make your kids sick because I, I've just gone through two months of that, man, and it was horrible. Well, I'm pretty sure our kids have been sick with everything over the last month and a half. So it's <laughs> it has been horrible. It has been horrible. <laughs> horrible. But keep keep me uh keep me up to date if anything changes, okay? Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Okay.